Before I get into color cast, I wanted to talk about how our eyes deceive us. And I'm going to use the Munker White illusion for this. This particular image that I'm showing you now was created by David Novick. He's a professor at the University of Texas, and he creates all of these uh, illusions based on the human perception of color. So if you're interested in that, just give them a quick Google. So I'm going to make this image a bit smaller because the effect happens more dramatically the smaller their image is. So I'm in Photoshop, so I'm just going to hit Command or Control minus to zoom out. So as you look at this, you're seeing four balls that are blue, four that are green, greenish yellow, and four that are real reddish orange or orangey red, right? I'll hit Command or Control zero to fit in screen. Now this is an optical illusion. I'm going to turn off the layer that has the lines going across the front of the balls. Note how they're, the different color lines are going across different balls. And this is the illusion. All the balls are the exact same kind of flesh color with that three-dimensional uh, toning to make it look like a ball. But you put these colors across it, like if you put the blue wavelength, the, a blue line across the ball, the whole ball will look blue. If you put a green line across the ball, the whole whole ball will look green. I'll zoom back out. See what I mean? So our, our eyes can't be trusted. So we just need to know that this phenomenon exists. So now let's talk about some real world examples. I'm going to start with this image and talk about color cast. Color cast is a tint of a particular color. It's typically unwanted and it evenly affects the entire photographic image or video in whole or part. Now, most digital cameras try to automatically detect this and compensate for a color cast. That's your auto white balance setting. And that truly will handle 85 to 90% of most average shooting. But if you are a dedicated shooter and you're only shooting outside in bright sunlight, set your white balance to bright sunlight. If you're shooting inside with strobe, set it to strobe, etc. So color cast correction is a process that fixes color issues and it makes the images and footage appear as naturalistic as possible. This is 100% different than color grading, which is more of a creative concern. The color grading process lets you add atmosphere and emotion to shots by coloring the footage in new and often unnatural ways. But that's not what we're doing. We're trying to just start from a, a natural, realistic perspective and then add our own vision to the image. So as you look at this, can you identify what is the color the problem is our eyes are going to auto white balance themselves to make us feel that this image is okay, that it doesn't have a color cast. So you have to really train your eyes as a photographer to look for it. Typically, you can find it in the light, lighter tones, the light areas, the light gray areas. Kind of to prove my point, I'm going to hold the space bar and just move this over. This is a big furry wing, right? What I'm going to do is I'm going to hit M for the marquee tool, and I'm going to make a big selection of that giant part, which should just be a white wing with some light gray stuff to define the wing patterns. I'm going to command or control J to jump it to a new layer. I'm going to come over and add a new layer while holding the command or control key. That way to add the new layer below the little color square I just created. And you can either go up to edit fill or you can hit shift F5. I'm on a Mac, so I'm just going to hit shift delete. Any of those things will bring up this field dialog box. And I'm going to choose contents 50% gray and choose OK. So now I'm going to zoom back into this by holding down the command and spacebar, control and spacebar for Windows people, we can pretty quickly see on this neutral gray background that there's, there's green. There's, there's nothing but green there. There's like green and light green, right? You can see that pretty clearly. Let me delete those now, now that I've kind of shown you that. So now I want to demonstrate the concept of how film photographers tackled color cast issues with film. Typically, you would use a filter that was the color complement of the cast you wanted to remove. So I'm going to emulate that here with digital. I'm going to hit Command or Control J to duplicate my layer. And then I'm going to go up to Filter, Blur, and Average. And what this is going to do is it's going to take every single color and tone in this image and average it out, keeping the overall, you know, shift of where it is. It kind of will show you a color cast. So this is clearly green, right? So there's no question. We can actually pop open the info palette, hover over it. And look at those numbers. You're looking right here, RGB values. Remember, Photoshop measures the tonality of red, green, and blue from 0 to 255. 256 total tones of red, green, and blue, because they count 0 as a number. RGB values of 0, 0, 0 is pure black. RGB value of 255 all the way down is pure white. And RGB values of 128 all the way down is mid-neutral gray. 
So looking at these numbers, you can see that the green is 160. That's the highest number. So obviously it's the, the, sum, the numbers are telling us it's green, but we can visually see that it's green. So this is a technique you can use for some images very effectively. So now that I've averaged out the overall color, I'm gonna hit Command or Control I to perfectly invert it to its exact color complement and I'm gonna choose the blend mode of color. It's gonna be just outside of your viewing area, but it's almost at the very bottom of the layer blend modes area. Now, remember Photoshop starts everything at 100% volume. It would be like turning on your radio to a new station and your volume is wide open. They want you to see the full effect. You always, almost always have to lower the opacity until it sounds pleasing to your ears. That's 0%, 100%, and I'm just hovering over the word opacity. My cursor will turn into a scrubby slider, allowing me just to drag it. It's a lot quicker than opening this just close your triangle and dragging back and forth that way. And I'm just going to drag it until it feels pretty good. I'm going to say it's around 44%. It's still not looking ideal, but it's looking better. Now that our eyes have coordinated to this particular uh, image, I'm going to turn it off and you'll see how green it really was. Look at that. I mean, it's, it's horribly greenish yellow, right? Very easy to see. Now I want to show you a better way. There's actually a good, better, best that I'll get into more detail in the following video, but I just wanted to touch on it. So you can use this with levels or curves. You will see a gray point eyedropper there. Click on that gray point eyedropper and I'm just going to click into that wing. Look at that. Isn't that just so Watch what happens when I turn that off. It's amazing how easily we can see the color cast in a comparative analysis because that looks just so much better. Let's customize the gray point eyedropper with this rose because what happens is any of these droppers, they're set, I'll click on one just to, let me get rid of that. I'll click on one just to start, click on the gray point eyedropper. Notice in the, the tool option bar, the sample size is by default set to point sample. And that's a one pixel selection. When it says point sample, it means it's clicking on one specific pixel, which is never good because these images are huge. If I, if I hover right here, actually, let me go into the navigator panel. Remember anything you want to see, just go into window. All of these things are panels. Just put check marks beside the ones you want to have open and access to. So here I can just use this to zoom in. I can grab this navigator to choose the area I want to zoom into. I could also hit command plus a hundred times to zoom in very quickly. But I want to show you what a pixel is. I know you know what a pixel is, right? So you all know these are pixels. If I were to click here to sample, my eye can't distinguish this. We couldn't see 100 by 100 square pixels averaged together because there are so many millions of them that make up this image. When your eyedroppers are set to point sample, it could be clicking on a JPEG artifact for that one pixel. It could be clicking on a part of a piece of dust. You don't know. So I always recommend changing that to three by three or five by five. Like three by three, that means if I click here on this, I mean, I'm, I'm just clicking somewhere aside that water drop. But if I click here, it means it's looking at the three pixels above see there's a darker one and two lighter ones it's these three pixels down and then so it's three rows of three then it averages all nine pixels i like the three by three or the five by five the five by five means this will look at 25 pixels around the center of where i choose so if i choose right here it's going to go two pixels above two pixels below it's basically five rows of five so 25 pixels are being averaged to give me the best possible solution so let's go back to the girl and just do that one more time. So again, I'm just going to add a levels and actually we can do curves as well. It's the same exact feature, same tools. The, the gray point tool sets the gray point in the image, which neutralizes color cast. That's a whole purpose to neutralize the color cast. And I'll just come over here somewhere, a little different spot, click inside there and just look at how it instantly removed it. You can see how it's altered the, the curves for each color channel to neutralize each individual color channel. So again, this is with it off, this is with it on. And when it's off, man, you can easily see what a problem it is. Now let me show you this in Adobe Camera Raw. So this is the same technique in Adobe Camera Raw. And then remember that Adobe Camera Raw has the exact same engine, same processing algorithms as Lightroom. You can do this exact same thing in Lightroom. Come over to the white balance tool, just select it, click on the similar same area that we did before, and it totally neutralizes the color cast. Now the power of being right here in ACR is all of these controls are just at your fingertips, which are so nice. You know, maybe I would want to put a touch of clarity in there and maybe maybe I would bump the saturation just a bit. Now here's something interesting. Let's say I wanted to bump the saturation. I mean, let's go crazy so you can see it. I'll do plus 40 on saturation 
and I'll try to make it bluer by minus 15 because I really like what that's doing to the background. Now what's interesting with Adobe Camera Raw is you can subtract what you did and counterbalance it. Just grab the adjustment brush and it's already set to new. And what did I do? I did uh, minus 15, so I'm gonna do plus, plus 15 and here at saturation I did plus 40, so I'm gonna do minus 40. So essentially I've loaded my brush, this adjustment brush, so that it will remove all the stuff that I did to it with the blue and the color saturation so that I can retain her natural colors while exaggerating the colors below. So what'd you think? That's the quickest way to, uh... yes, can I help you? I was wondering, I love that 10 minute lecture and all the extra stuff, but would you please show me how to do that Adobe Camera Raw white balance trick but boil it down to just one minute. Like, how do I do it without all the frills and the extras? No problem, my man. Let's do it right now. So I just wanted to show you the same technique in Adobe Camera Raw. Again, looking at it now that we've seen the good version, you know, it's pretty obvious this has a greenish yellowish cast to it, a really strong color cast that takes away from the beauty of the scene. Remember, Adobe Camera Raw has the exact same uh, processing algorithms as Lightroom. So you can do this exact same thing in Lightroom. Just click on the white balance tool and click on where there's a light or light gray tone that has a color contamination and it will remove it for the whole picture. And you can keep clicking until you get uh, something that you like the best. And I think somewhere in here is, is I, I like that the best. It's not as, as strong of a correction as we saw in Adobe, I'm sorry, it's not as strong as a correction as we saw in Photoshop, but we're here where we have the ability now to, you know, drag, a, you know, a lot of different sliders to shift things in any any direction that we we may want to go. This will be a good chance to add a a white post crop vignette because that probably most most aligns with the scene. Hey, what are you still doing here? It's over. Go home. Yes, that's awesome. What? You just took one in the jugular, man! Huh. Whoa! Yes! <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god, I did! Is this bad? Is this bad? You should pull that out! That shit is not cool! Come on! The door, man! You got a fucking door down there!